Well, Kosanita, from the word that we've gathered out there, we understand that there could be two or more factions. One of them, we understand, is disposed to negotiations. The other is more disposed towards violence. So how do we know that if we're able to successfully negotiate with these ones that are you know, disposed to negotiations, that the ones who you know, believe the violence is the way are not going to you know, take to arms and ensure that they are also heard? Well, when you have two enemies, uh, the first thing is you don't confront two of them at the same time. You move towards the one that is easier for you to handle, and then from there you move to the next one. Um, even if there are factions, that is the Shekau and the Albarnawi faction as we know it as it is. But I believe that the one which, who, whom these girls were uh, are the ones who are calling the shots in, in the group. And I think um, we should continue to move with the ones who are prepared to talk to us to address these ones and then we then move to the ones who are not prepared to talk to us. And one problem that has led to, to all this, uh, these delays and time is that these girls are, are embedded into the insurgency. They live within a crosshair. You cannot get at the insurgents without getting at the girls. And uh, in such a kind of delicate uh, labyrinth and, 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 and metrics. All you need to do is to explore the options of dialogue, which is the which is the one that has been explored now. So if we get these girls out now, and one group has agreed to talk to us, and then we deal with them, and then we now face the one that are not. Uh, when we're done with this, then we move to the next phase. Now, Senator, we cannot but address those who still doubt. I mean, there are people who, you know, have said that this, this entire thing in the very first instance was a, was a hoax. It was political, and now that, you know, we're getting the girls released, this cannot be the cheaper girls. Do you think the government needs to move a step further to show, to prove, you know, beyond reasonable doubt that indeed there was... Oh, there was a kidnapping, there was an abduction of these girls, and that these truly are the cheaper girls who are back, uh, you know, from captivity. Well, um, I think it will be wrong for anyone to think otherwise, that there was no abduction. There was abduction, and uh, there was negotiation, and there was release. Uh, what we have is that we naturally people will raise issues, conspiracy theories, and skepticisms on so many things. But in in in, in a factual sense, uh, uh, these girls are Chibo girls, and the parents have attested to that, and it is open for everyone to see. And the narratives are very clear. These girls are not actresses for them to. By their age and by their physical innocence, you can see. And that it's going to be very difficult for any government to have kept such a number of persons uh, for such a very long time uh, without the truth really coming out. And, and where you see the, the DSS uh, fully committed to this, and where you see the Swiss fully committed to this, you should be able to give some benefit of doubt that is a fact. There is no way you can get the ICRC and the Swiss government into something that is not true. That because before they got involved in this, they had to do a lot of um, background checks on the information they received and then the contacts they were able to make. And like I've said, this is a process. And even before the security agents were involved in it, they too had to do a lot of checks. And the new set of security chiefs, especially Daura himself, uh, a very nice officer who has been very experienced for a very long time, and he too had to do a lot of work to ensure that the failures of the last uh, security chiefs uh, is not being repeated now. So uh, nobody should doubt that these were girls uh, from Chibok, and nobody should also doubt that they were abducted. They were abducted and they were free through negotiation. That is a fact. Mm. Let's quickly go to Lagos now for some questions.
Yeah, Senator, we have a lot of people also asking that uh, the last they heard was they were about to take exams before they were abducted. So many keep asking here, how come, I mean, maybe you could know, they don't hear them speak in English? Well, um, I think one is at liberty to speak in whatever language one wants to speak, and there is no... Uh, and I, I believe that it is natural for people to look at loopholes and also uh, gray areas to ask questions and it is natural but I believe that such questions should be directed to either the principal of GGSS Chibok or the governor of Borno State but I, I am confident that these are Chibok girls and they just choose to speak in house language and uh, I don't think uh, that there is any reason for any one of them. And I think it's a challenge for you when you have the access to sit down with some of them uh, and let's speak, uh, ask them in English. I believe they will be able to, to, to tell you, to speak to, to respond to you in English. Uh, but they are actually the Chibok girls. Uh, all you need to do is to look at these photos and then compare it to the ones which were released by the insurgent groups. Uh, two years ago and the one that came out some few months ago. So you will see some of their photos in, uh, among the girls that were abducted. Well, do you think that's something government is going to do? Are they going to match the photos? Uh, well, I, I believe those who should be able to match are those who have doubts. And uh, government is not is convinced and, and many of us are convinced. If I, uh, uh, we couldn't say that it's only Chibo girls that are in captivity. There were a lot of people who are in in the, in 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 the, in, the uh, in the hands of the insurgents, not necessarily Chibok girls, but the fact that the agitation for Chibok girls come to symbolize the resistance against the insurgency, civil resistance, and also it came to symbolize the campaign to free all those who are kept in captivity by the insurgents. So the name Chibok. Uh, became an emblem, it became a symbol, a brand of, of objection, of resistance to the insurgents. But in no way should anybody doubt that these girls are from Chibok. And I, I am fully believe that the government is going to move further to get this A3. Right now, as we are speaking, I, I can assure that uh, talks are still going on. Senator, if I may How ask, if I may ask this question, back? Senator, the... Well, um, it's not going to be as difficult as the first one, in the sense that now okay, both sorry. sides knew that they are not up, but well, the government knew they are not up for scam, and the insurgents knew uh, this is not a plot to arrest their commanders, their members, and all, or, or undermine what they believe they are doing that is right. So I, I believe that this is going to be even easier than the first one. Senator Sani, the question I want to ask has to do with some um, statements you made earlier. First of all, you said something about um, the fears of sustaining the talks with the insurgents. Um, what, what will be causing those kind of fears? And are there still any fears that these talks will go on as planned? Well, uh, for now, since the... the uh, this um, formula has been used to achieve success. I believe that it should be kept in, in a secret for it to be able to still be used to achieve uh, success of, of, other, of the other girls in captivity. If we can recall very well in the last two years, uh, one of the problems we had when Dr. Dutti Ahmed, the President General of Spring Council of Sharia in Nigeria, uh, when he got involved in the talks, one of the issues he wrote was a very far, when he was, what, what he said was that um, uh, the talks were sabotaged by people who simply uh, continue to undermine the process by divulging each and every information uh, that's supposed to be uh, preserved for negotiators. So I, I, I believe that, um, that this, uh, this process should also be treated the same. Um, the, you need confidentiality in terms of, uh, of, 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 of getting, achieving from, 
from this kind of process. Uh, that gives confidence to both sides that uh, uh, reliability uh, that this this is something that can be achieved. And I can remember in in a, in a previous attempt, you have people invited by the insurgents invited for talks and they end up being arrested. You have negotiators offering themselves and end up being suspected. You also have a situation where government has been fleeced a lot of money. But this time around, uh, all these cogs have been removed and then success has been achieved. So Did you exercise any personal fears yourself when you, you know, got involved in the negotiations? Well, the fear I had was the fact that if this insurgents now handed over these girls to the negotiators and then at that very time when we are thinking of swap and the government now refused to give us the insurgents to hand over to the negotiators at the end of the day we may end up handing over ourselves to the negotiators that could have been a very big problem and also we have a situation whereby you convince the government to negotiate and they come to the table and then something very bad happens in terms of perhaps uh, putting the lives of government officials at risk. That is another problem. Uh, but um, over the time, after failures, repeated failures, uh, corrections were made. The reason I ask you this quickly yeah. was because you said that, you know, you, you negotiators come to the table, table and they end up being suspected. Yeah. Did you face that at any point in time? Uh, no, I didn't face any any suspicion of, of, of being whatever because I I have no such background. I and I didn't build my own credibility on negotiating for insurgents. I'm simply a concerned Nigerian, even before I joined the Senate, one who is concerned about the need to for all citizens to contribute to peace. And that was why in twenty eleven I took former President Obasanjo to Meduguri to meet with the families of the insurgents, uh, to see the possibility of having, uh, exploring the process of dialogue. And then later, when the abduction happened, and I kept thinking, what can I do? Mm. And then I also thought of the idea of negotiation. And then I saw how it, it failed in several attempts. Senator, yeah. I'm, I'm afraid that we'll have to wrap up at this point. Uh, but we must thank you very much for coming on Sunrise Daily and for sharing your thoughts with us. We've been speaking with Senator Shehu Sani, who is the Chairman Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debt. Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. Do join us again.